Hello, my name's Helen Tovey. I'm editor of Family Tree and I'm going to talk to Susan Moore about her talk at the forthcoming Secret Lives Conference. And she's going to be talking about lunatics in the courts of equity. So Susan, can you tell us a little bit, first of all, what are the courts of equity and what, you know, what date span do they cover? What sort of cases do they cover? The courts of equity are my absolute favourite source for looking for family history. They cover the late Middle Ages from about 1480 right up to the 19th century and they are absolutely full of genealogical detail, family history detail. You get information in them that you cannot find anywhere else. Some records will give you four or five generations all in one record. If you've got a family that has John, son of John, son of John, and you're not sure are there two of them or three of them, this will clarify it for you. Well, that definitely sounds like a source worth getting to grips Absolutely, with. Absolutely. So yeah. um, they've got national coverage. National, uh, yes. And where might um, you find these records? The records the are all at the National Archives. OK. They're reasonably well catalogued, the main principal records now online on the National Archives Discovery Catalogue. The, for the rest of the records, you have to be there to look at the uh, catalogues that they've got on actually on the shelves there. And how did you first get into using the Courts of Equity records in your, in your research? Well, I've been doing professional research for other people all my working life. So way back in my 20s, mm. I was actually working as an apprentice to a professional genealogist and he introduced me to the records. And we spent probably three days going through a whole series of cases about one particular village. And it was like reading, it was like a soap opera. Yeah, It was wonderful. I was living at home at the time and when I got back, home each evening, my mother would say, so what happened this time? Yeah, I could relay <laughs> the what, next instalment. Yeah, what had been going on in this village with everybody at everybody others, everybody else's throats. They disputes about lands, disputes about who married who, mm -hmm. and huge amounts of personal detail. He said, she said, yeah. and that sort of thing. Just wonderful records, and I was hooked. And, and it's particularly the lunatics which um, have yes. hooked you as well. And were you, did, were you looking for lunatics in the records, or was it something that you gradually realised there was a lot of coverage of lunatics? I gradually realised there's an awful lot of coverage for yeah. lunatics, and I've looked at some cases for clients in the past, and some of the people really are lunatics mm. and their land, their estate can be quite small estates. We talk about estates. I'm not talking about big landed families necessarily, mm. but it'd be taken out of their hands and held by an uncle or a brother or somebody. But there are many cases, particularly where women are concerned, where their estate is taken out of their hands and they're classed as lunatics and they're not. Yeah. There's no way. And it's very a, frustrating. To yes. Yeah. And you get a lot of detail. And sometimes even in the catalogue, it'll say not classed as a lunatic, although they've been told that they are a lunatic and that's why their lands have been taken away. And you have children also where occasionally you'll get one who's classed as a lunatic, therefore cannot have their land. Mm. And it's usually somebody else is after the land. Mm. That's, that's quite cunning, isn't yes. it? Do you think that's that yes. devious to put a label on someone else yeah. like that for that reason? And then you get people giving evidence. Well, how do you, how do you know they're a lunatic mm. and describe their behaviour? So mm. you get a huge amount of detail that you can't get in any other records. Mm. Mm. And especially this, this is going like pre-newspapers as well, isn't it? So you're oh, yes. getting lots of background detail to, to communities, to individual yeah. families. Yeah, it's real yeah. social history, local history, family history, obviously. But if you want to know about the village where your ancestors come from, even if they're not mentioned in a chancery case, read the cases because they'll tell you what your family would have been talking about because it's what's happening in the yes. village at that time. So what would you recommend to somebody who wants to start trying to use these records in their family history research? The first place to look is the Discovery Catalogue, the National Archives online catalogue just look up the word chancery and your surname mm -hmm. and see what comes up mm -hmm. and you might find records in the 1500s you might find some in the 1800s and anything in between well, it definitely sounds very tempting and well worth getting to grips with and so clearly your this is not a well used record i should imagine like most family historians maybe i'm just speaking for myself but we'd go for the more readily available online records we think this is definitely worth doing your research, planning the records that you need to go and look at in the National Archives and making a trip there. And oh, definitely, yeah. yes. Yeah. I mean, to me, if I'm coming afresh to a new family case that I've been asked to work on, Chancery is the first place I look. I only look in parish registers afterwards to confirm actual dates for the family I've already worked out. And I've got a big family tree just from the Chancery records. That's amazing. Yeah. Then, you look yeah. At the, then you look at the parish registers later to just say, OK, so this John was born in 1620 yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah. No, number one source. And I'm trying to get other people to use these records. So I've mm -hmm. written a couple of books about them. One very recently covering not just the Chancery Court, which is the main one, but also the other courts of equity, which don't really deal with lunatics. 
There's the Court of the Star Chamber, Court of Requests, Court of Exchequer, and for people in Lancashire, there's the Palatinate of Lancashire records and so on. There are a lot of records that are full of personal detail. Well, this sounds very interesting indeed. And so your talk fits as part of the wider Secret Lives theme of using unusual records and finding out different aspects of our research that we don't normally like come across unless mm. like not like you you obviously yeah. are very your favor with them so what are you looking forward to getting out of on the weekend well because i do professional research i'm looking always for other sources that i hadn't necessarily thought of so i'm hoping i'll be telling people about chancery records that they may not have thought of and i'll be looking to see what other ideas there are and i spotted that a few other people are talking about lunatics so it'll be very interesting to see what they say in comparison to what i found mm, mm. in the records where you've got the personal people actually talking in mind whereas i think a lot of the other records are going to be more formal official ones yeah medical medical yes. officials yeah 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 well that sounds very interesting thank you very much that's all right yeah.